Today I'm going to tell you, wonderful people, why DMC is the best guide to creating the perfect outbreak tour. Escape from Tarkov was what inspired Infinity Ward to implement the DMZ zone. DMZ is an open world experience where players are dropped into the militarized zone with hundreds of AI enemies, contracts, strongholds, and worst of all, people. You begin DMZ with little to no loot, depending on whether you have opted for the easy mode, which is unlocked by... <laughs> Classic pay to win Activision, we hate to see it. Anyway, you then spend time in the map, Almazra, fighting to get stuff. Thanks. To make your character as capable as possible to survive against the increasing difficulty in mini bosses and other players. So at this point, you're probably like this. Trying to figure out why I think that DMZ is the perfect progression to Outbreak 2. So I've already described what DMZ is, and if you're like me, you're a huge addict of the original Outbreak and Cold War Zombies. You can already see the connection between Outbreak and DMZ. In Outbreak, you are pushed into the larger maps of Cold War with AI enemies with a zombie twist. What a twist! Mini bosses and contracts. Also, in Outbreak, you scavenge for loot to upgrade your guns and armor, and also to collect enough points for things like the Pack a Punch or a pair. So, with the basics already in place in Outbreak 1, then what does DMZ have that could improve on this? The loot mechanics in DMZ are mostly around getting high valuable loot and selling it, scavenging old fridges, safes, trains, and your grandma's purse, and then either selling it for money that you could invest in kill streaks, crafting new gear, or extracting and get a boatload of XP for it. Now, the way this would align to Outbreak 2 is that if we make an apocalyptic map, then the players would be survivors just looking for loot to trade, crafting new weapons and gear to help them in the apocalypse setting of Outbreak 2. This could even follow along the same lines as Black Ops 2, where the world was destroyed and there were survivors just trying to get by. Hell, the best case example of this would be Wonder Weapons. You would need to infill and find rare loot to create the Wonder Weapons, similarly to how some zombie maps have made you hunt for parts of Wonder Weapons and then find a workbench to build it. This could also tie into my next point to make it an even more unique zombie experience that Call of Duty has never seen before. But the money system could in fact replace the point system that has been used for the longest time, with each zombie or occasional zombies dropping cash and looting becoming harder the longer you stay in the zone due to the world growing harder as the match progresses. With the current DMZ this means stronger AI dropping in and then when the strongest AI is already in the map they drop in even more. With zombies this could be done. I use Cold War, one of my favourite entries in the zombies as an example. Click on the pop up banner on the top right if you want to see my 5 reasons why. It's based on what they did in the existing outbreak. Adding in more mini bosses as the game progresses, increasing their abilities increasing their difficulty, even like DMZ, adding in the commander style enemies that only have one per map, and using the existing Outbreak model, that would be the... Order! The next main change that Outbreak 2 could introduce is PvP or PvE. Similarly to DMZ, a system that puts multiple 3-4 to four man squads into the map to compete for loot, what are you saying? for loot, or work together to all get better loot. Okay, maybe the DMZ community is a tad trigger happy. He says, don't shoot me, I'm pregnant, I'm on the baby, and I shot him. This would add an element of danger to every deployment and to Outbreak 2. The fear that all your time, effort, blood, sweat and tears could all have been wasted due to someone else having a better gaming chair. Or that they have Shrek living on their chutney channel due to the sheer amount of sweat that the player is producing thinking they're going to be the next Shroud. What are you doing in my swamp? The PvP element could have added benefits of using decoy grenades to flop the undead towards the other squad, which, if the other squad has decoys, would end up like some sort of Wimbledon, with them tossing zombies back and forward to each other using the decoys. To further this though, I feel like Outbreak 2 would require a karma based system, one where those PvP prone players are made more obvious, perhaps through skins for example, they have bones appear as armour on them and it increases the more they, they kill people, whereas players with good karma look cleaner, you can scale the karma from no bones to freaking skeleton. <laughs> This would help players identify more friendly players from a distance and choose whether to engage in proximity chat, hoping that the friendly players do not have a microphone dislodged in their esophagus. <sighs> like, I'm saying this now, if Treyarch put in this DMZ idea and I come across you trying to make a team with you and then you talk in proximity chat like that, I'm putting you down. Eleven has been through enough to tolerate that. For encouraging PvE, the developers could add more. Oh, type bosses onto the map that would require at least 8 people to take them down, this would encourage more team based work. Also much like the current system of DMZ, they could implement a faction system to encourage more PvE or PvP. 
and even they could have this tie into the karma system. If the players are prone to more violence, their missions will be catered to this, so having more operator kill based missions. If the player is more friendly, their mission gets focused on PvE or PvP specifically against people with evil karma, such as bounties against those people who have killed so many players. This PvP slash PvE element may not be out to everyone's taste, however I do think it would deeply enhance the zombies experience and take it to a whole new audience of players, and could even spur on a full game on this very topic. Although we've all been waiting for that standalone COD Zombies game for years, right folks? These are just a couple of my ideas on why Outbreak 2 should leverage the DMZ game mode. I hope you enjoyed them and I would like to know your thoughts in the comments below what aspects you think would be great in to add for Outbreak 2.0. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.